Welcome back to this NPTEL course on game theory. In the previous session we have introduced the correlated equilibrium where the cooperation is through some common random device. Now we will look at another uh, cooperative aspect which makes the non-cooperative game theory as a cooperative. So this is actually known as the Nash bargaining problem. So in this bargaining problem for example there are uh, two players let us uh, we start with two players let us consider the prisoner's dilemma. In a prisoner's dilemma when they cooperate they are actually achieve, achieving a very bad Nash equilibrium. In the Nash equilibrium they are actually get that is a inferior equilibrium. But if there is somehow if they can cooperate themselves that means they are not uh, giving testimony on the others then they know that they will get a better one but how do we achieve that. So in some sense can we really come up with certain contracts or something like that which will ensure that they will get a better pay than the Nash equilibrium in for example prisoner's dilemma. So the, the Nash introduced uh, this problem called uh, Nash bargaining problem. So which we will discuss now. So in the Nash bargaining problem this is a situation where the following thing there are individuals they have the possibility of of concluding mutually beneficial agreements. So they know that they, by cooperating they can get a better a good better utilities. So the, the second point is that there is a conflict of interest. about the agreements about which agreement to conclude. So if uh, among all the mutually beneficial agreement if they have uh, everyone is okay with something compared to the other then they will go for it. But the most important thing here in the Nash bargaining problem is that there is a conflict of interest. So what is good for one player may not be good for the other player. So that is another thing okay. and this agreement no agreement without without player approval. So whatever agreement that we are uh, considering it the player should agree to this without their agreement nothing will be there. These are the main uh, points of the Nash bargaining problem okay. So there are certain uh, assumptions certain necessary information when this thing is there if uh, for example if there is no agreement we must specify what the players will get. So this is the disagreement payoffs. Okay. This is a disagreement payoff if the players are not coming to agreement how much they will get it. This is one very important to specify in this thing there is another important point to specify here is that possible agreements this is there. So now this uh, situation possible agreement the possible payoffs the how much they are getting that this is another thing to specify in this problem. Now, there are uh, several places where such situations arise for example the management labor attrition where the management negotiates with the 
labor union. So, basically labor union have certain uh, ut utility over uh, what agreement they should go with the management and that is one very nice example where this subject has been applied. And in fact, there are uh, several other possibilities for example, even in duopoly market when the two firms are competing in a market they can actually go for this bargaining. So, that both of them can benefit by staying in the market uh, so that they can avoid the, uh, the non-cooperation and hence inferior equilibrium. Okay. So, now let us formally describe uh, this problem let me explain this. This is basically introduced by Nash. So, this consists of pair F and V where F is basically feasible set of allocations. So, this is basically F is a subset of R2 and we assume that this is a closed convex. What is V? V is the disagreement point V is nothing but V1, V2 this is an R2. So, what it says is that if no agreement player 1 will get V1 player 2 will get V2. So, this is basically the problem. So, now we need to there are certain assumptions that we have made closed and convex. Of course, there is one more thing is that we need to make sure that V is in F, but this is not a serious assumption, but V should be a possible allocation vector. So, therefore, in that sense it is natural to assume this one. Okay. Now, there is one more thing we need to take the set F intersection set of all x1, x2 in R2 such that x1 greater than equals to v1, x2 greater than equals to v2. So, basically because v1, v2 is the disagreement point there must be a allocation where both the players get higher than v1 and v2 there must be. So, that means this set must be non-empty. If all the uh, points in F are less than V1 and V2, no, they won't they won't go certainly for this bargaining. Okay. So now let us look at some justifications. So why convex? Okay. This, for example, if there are two agreements, two allocations possible, and now players can try to look at a randomization. Now, when you look at the randomization, the feasible allocation then will be a convex combination of two points in F that should also be there in F. So, this is in that sense is a technical assumption to include the randomizations and things like that. So, therefore, uh, the convexity is necessary. Then F is assumed to be close. So, this is basically closedness is a natural topological argument. For example, if we have a sequence of uh, agreement points and then their limit should also be there. So, this many a times will become a mathematical necessity. So, therefore, this thing and as I said uh, this particular set non-emptiness this is necessary because if there is no vector in F which satisfies these two conditions then there is no bargaining at all no one would agree whatever it is. So, therefore, uh, V1, V2 is going to be there pay automatically. So, therefore, this comes. So, these are the reasons why this thing. Now, let us look at how these are connected with non-zero non sum games connection with let us say bimatrix games. 
Okay. So, now let us take a game there are two players S1, S2 are the strategy spaces U1, U2 are the their payoffs. So, let us consider this game. Now, let us look at the let us take F to be the set of allocations under correlated strategies. So, that is nothing but u1 mu u2 mu such that mu is a correlated strategy. So, this is basically a this thing uh, recall u1 mu is nothing but summation s in s mu of s u1 s and this is nothing but summation s in s mu s u2 s. And you can easily see that the f is a convex and compact in fact can close its set because uh, the S1, S2 are finite strategies. So, therefore, PS1 cross S2 is compact. So, therefore, mu is compact. So, therefore, you can say they are all compact. F is a compact set that is in fact what we need is closeness and uh, F is this thing. And how, how can we choose V? So, V could be any Nash equilibrium for example. Okay. There are several possibilities for disagreement vector. There are multiple ways to choose V. For example, V could be the min max strategies. One, one possibility is V1 is minimum sigma 2 in delta S2 max the mixture strategies of player 1, this is for player 2, u1 sigma 1 sigma 2, this is the v1, v2 will be again the corresponding thing. So, this is one possibility the min max uh, this thing is the in the worst case they will be getting this much. So, V1, V2 could be one disagreement vector or uh, the another possibility is to choose Nash payoff. So, Nash payoff vector is another possibility and then there are many other ways to choose it. Okay. The Nash actually solved this problem using certain axioms. So, let us uh, write down the axioms of Nash, we will start describing them. Okay. So, the there are 5 axioms one is strong efficiency first I will write and then I will start explaining everything. Individual rationality, scale covariance, independence of irrelevant alternatives. The other one is symmetry. Okay. So, these are the 5 axioms that Nash proposed then uh, we need to explain each of them, but let us use the following thing. So, let us use F, F comma V, F V is a Nash uh, bargaining problem, F V, v is basically 
nothing but F1, Fv, F2, Fv. This is the solution, the Nash bargaining solution, the concept that we are going to define. Okay. So, if given a problem F comma V, then the solution of this we are de denoting by F, 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 F is basically the rule that it is giving the solution F1, Fv, F2, Fv. Now this particular rule how we are defining FFV that should satisfy certain axioms and now we need to explain this axioms. So what is strong ax efficiency? So first uh, let us look at it. So we we are already given F. So what is a given allocation? X is equals to x1, x2 in F. This is basically strongly Pareto efficient. We say this x to be a strongly Pareto efficient if there exists no y that is y1, y2 in f such that the following holds y1 is bigger than or equals to x1, y2 is bigger than or equals to x2 with strict inequality satisfied for at least 1. Inequality. Okay, so uh, that means x1, x2. There is no y which has higher than x1 or higher than x2, and one of them should be strict, and other could be equal. So if there is no such y, then we say this uh, allocation x has a strongly Pareto efficient. So the I will also say that an allocation x that is x1, x2 in f is weakly Pareto efficient if there exists no y such that y1 greater than x1, y2 greater than x2. Okay. So, y1 should not be strictly bigger than x1, y2 should not be strictly bigger than x2, then you call this x, x1, x2 as a weakly Pareto efficient. Now let us uh, go to the strong efficiency axiom, the axiom asserts that any solution of bargaining problem should be feasible and strongly efficient. So why do we require this? So the solution should be strongly efficient. If it is not strongly efficient, that means what both the players actually have a uh, other option where basically there is something, both of them will get higher payoffs. So therefore, uh, they would like to go for that instead of this one. So therefore, assuming that the solution should be strongly efficient is a quite a nat natural axiom. That is the strong efficient angle. Now let us look at the individual rationality. So we will now consider the individual rationality. What it says that F, Fv should be greater than equals to V. That means F1 Fv is bigger than or equals to V1, F2 Fv should be bigger than or equals to V2. 
this is again natural because if any player is getting less than the disagreement payoff no they would not like to consider this solution. So, this is a individually rational this thing that means each player would like to get at least V1 if not more. So, this is the individual rational axiom. Then the next scale covariance. Okay. So, this depends on some notation let us take lambda 1, lambda 2, mu 1, mu 2 with lambda 1 strictly greater than 0, lambda 2 strictly greater than 0. Let us consider few numbers lambda 1, lambda 2, mu 1, mu 2 with lambda 1, lambda 2 strictly greater than 0. Now, define g to be lambda 1 x 1 plus mu 1, lambda 2 x 2 plus mu 2 such that x 1 x 2 is in f. Look at this set. Okay. So, what is really happening is that the g is nothing but a scaled version of this vector x 1 x 2. So, x 1 lambda 1 x 1 lambda 1 is positive and lambda 2 is also positive. Now, then I will take another point w this is also scaled lambda 1 v 1 plus mu 1 lambda 2 v 2 plus mu 2 this is the this thing. Now, consider g w the new bargaining problem. So, what should be the solution of this? Okay. So, we can easily say is that f of g w should be same as lambda 1 f 1 f v plus mu 1 lambda 2 f 2 f v plus mu 2. Okay. This is a natural to again expect for example, if all the numbers are scaled by some constant let us say 2, then everyone whatever you get in f in g they must get double to that. So, that is exactly what it is saying okay. multiplied by lambda 1 lambda 2 and then this mu 1 is the translation. So, this is the scale covariance when all the vectors are scaled and translated by something the solution should also get have the same effect. So, this is the scale covariance. Then the next uh, assumption axiom is independence of irrelevant axiom. Okay. So, now this axiom is that suppose for any close convex G such that for any closed convex G such that G is contained in F and the solution corresponding to F is also in G then the solution corresponding to GV should be same as this. Okay. So, what is this uh, assumption? Let us uh, say that if FV is your bargaining problem the solution of FV actually is inside G then if you consider this restricted uh, agreements G with the same uh, disagreement vector V then the solution should be same as that it cannot be. There. So, this is a uh, known as independence of irrelevant axiom. Okay. In other words what you are saying is that if certain allocations from F are removed which are not solutions in such a way that the G still happens to be convex then the solution will will also continue to be same. Okay. So, this is the axiom 4. Then the final axiom is symmetry. Okay. So, this axiom says the following thing. Suppose V1 their disagreement payoffs are same and also if 
set of all x2 comma x1 such that x1 comma x2 is in f okay basically we are taking the symmetric this is same as f that means if x1 x2 is in f then x2 x1 is also in, in f so the symmetry of this thing then the solution should also have symmetric f1 fv should be same as f2 f so when v1 v2 the disagreement payoffs are same and the set f is symmetric then the solution should also satisfy that the play whatever player one gets same player two will also get okay so these are the five axioms under these five axioms nash proposed the following theorem so let me state the theorem given a two person bargaining problem if we there exists a unique solution chan f that satisfies the five axioms in fact the solution satisfies the following thing so what is this is that f f v belongs to arg max x1 x2 in f x1 greater than equals to v1 x2 greater than equals to v2 of x1 minus v1 into x2 minus v2 okay so this is the theorem that uh, nash proved what this theorem says that the, if i define the solution rule f of f v to be a the vector which maximizes this product x1 minus v1 into x2 minus v2 over the feasible allocation satisfying this individual rationality then that solution rule satisfies this five axioms and this is the unique solution we will prove this theorem in the next session and then we stop with this thank you